Hey, we're out here in Jonesboro, Arkansas at Living Word Church, and they have been a part of the Churchfront Accelerator program. So I wanna share with you all the things that they accomplished before we got here, and since we're on site now, the last few days, what we've done. They did a ton of work before we ever got out here. So they got to connect with Pro Church Lights, and they figured out what lighting they needed, and Pro Church Lights sent them the lights, and they went ahead and did all the work of installing them and getting it programmed. So they did a great job with that. All of their new lighting looks excellent. They also asked us what to do with acoustic paneling, and so we kind of worked out what to do with all the acoustic paneling, and they hung tons of panels in this room. So as soon as I walked in, I could tell this room was treated well. So that was nice to walk into an already treated room. Also, before I got here, they went ahead and changed and tuned the drum heads and did a great job of getting good tones out of the drum shells. And they also added new heartbeat cymbals, so they're able to get a, a darker, lower volume wash out of all their cymbals. So it fits really, really well in the mix. And they also ran a ton of cables. So all the cabling, switching over to SDI. Previously, there was a drawer full of uh, HDMI adapters, failed attempts to try and get more displays out of the Mac Mini to their stage display and different parts of the building. So they ran all the SDI that we needed to, as well as all the SDI and network cable within this booth to make sure that we were ready to just terminate cables and plug them in when we needed to. We also did uh, a lot of power work that we'll show you in a little bit. So for the audio console, we went with the Wing. We went back and forth a ton on Wing versus SQ5 and, and landed on this, um, mostly for the features of being able to do the vocal tuning right on it, as well as some other processing and how many inputs and outputs they needed. So we always weigh those options of what's the best console for the church, and we landed on the Wing here. And there was, and still is, an analog snake. So previously there was an Yamaha LS9 here, and the analog snake, all the inputs went into the back. So what we ended up doing was keeping that analog snake. Maybe in the future they'll redo and put the, the digital snake head back there, but we've just got it underneath of the tech booth here and just use the analog snake to plug right into the DL32 that we have there, as well as a new product that we've never installed until this last few days is a stage connect. So let me show you this. This is a one rack unit and it has 16 combo jacks that are all line level and you use a single XLR cable to connect connect it to a Behringer or Midas console and you can have 16 channels of inputs or outputs or a combination depending on which product you buy. These are all inputs. So this kept a really clean way of getting all these microphones into this rack unit here, and then a single XLR over to the back of the Behringer wing. We added a few microphones here, and so it was gonna go over the amount of local inputs that we had on the back of the console, and also saved us from running a whip of uh, cables from here to there. Previously, there were two wedges on stage, and that's what all of the vocalists were using to hear. And then the backline musicians had avioms, some older avioms, so we updated to just using P16s. So on the P16s, we went ahead and programmed all of this ahead of time and made sure that they had all that they needed to be able to get their in-ears. And then for the frontline vocalists, we added all new in-ears from Sennheiser. We have the XSW here. So really cost-effective, uh, good quality, and very easy to set up. But to do the RF management for it, we got one of these RF venue combined eights. So you can have eight. Obviously, we're just using six right now, but we can expand in the future. And this was super simple to set up. It powers each individual one of these with a really nice cable management power system, as well as the actual RF uh, BNC connector. We're able to do all those patch cables in the back really clean like that. And so out of the RF venue rack unit, we just have a single cable coming over to this device here. So that would be the transmitter for all of their in-ears. So you've probably seen this in other videos if you've been following us, but we're using this waveform software to record and play back all of the tracks. So using Dante, we put a Dante card in the wing as well. We're able to track all of the inputs from the stage and then be able to play them back through the wing. And I wanna show you this too. The simple press of a button. So because of that, I put it on page two so that it's not accidental for someone to be able to just hit. But as soon as you press this button, it flips all of the inputs to the card instead of the 
uh, XLR inputs. I'm gonna flip that back and go back to page one so no one accidentally hits it. So again, we've got the really nice heartbeat cymbals. And then for the drum mics themselves, we went with the SE Electronics, the, the V-Pack. So we've got these really awesome mics that uh, I just like how low profile they are. I think they're gonna be hard to hit. And I also like the way that they sound. So really impressed with these drum mic packages. It has the kick, snare, toms, and both the overheads. And then on stage here for instruments, other than the drums, we have a bass amp which is now not going to be used. The bass player has uh, an Ampeg and a Sans amp, so we're gonna just move to not having this amplifier on stage, and we got rid of the wedges as well. So uh, we're pretty silent stage. For guitar, one thing that was new uh, that I had tried for the first time at rehearsal last night was it's a newer guitarist, doesn't have any pedals or amplifier, so what we did was we just plugged into a DI box, and then on the wing, tried out the amp modeling that's available on the wing. So it worked out pretty well. I was more impressed than I thought I would be. So we are in a back electrical room here. This is where all of the audio lines come in and out of. One thing that we switched in here was just instead of having the Avioms, we switched to the P16D to power all of the P16 units. And then that's really the only thing that we changed in this rack. So we're still using the system processor and the amplifiers that were here before. So there might be a PA upgrade in the future, but for now uh, it wasn't worth doing any messing with. It sounded uh, as good as it was gonna get until new speakers were in place. One thing I had very little to do with other than giving the suggestion was cleaning out this room. So previously this room was not quite as clean. So I recommended just buying some tubs and uh, the team that's here has been great doing tons of work. Um, just put all the things in tubs, labeled it, kept all of the boxes from all the things that we just installed. So if something were to go wrong, they'd still have the box, they'd be able to ship it back or get a replacement from. What's up guys? I'm excited to be here on this uh, site visit with one of our clients here at Living Word Church. I don't often get to come to these, but we had some significant video upgrades we were helping them implement and I love video and I like testing out some new gear. So I'm really ex excited about this new system we deployed uh, at this church. We'll talk about the video switching and such in a few moments. But first, let's talk about this Blackmagic camera setup. And using this particular camera, this is the Blackmagic uh, Studio 6K. It's a newer model that came out in 2023. Lots of cool features on it. And it's paired with this Canon 70 to 200 Cine Servo lens. Uh, which is really great. I'm, I'm calling this now like a really good mid-level um, broadcast follow cam setup. And you'll see why this is such a great setup in a few moments. Before we talk about the camera and lens setup, let's talk about the tripod. This is the Manfrotto MVH502A. Um, it's a fluid head and it has the 546B tripod with mid spreader. So lots of things going on here. We'll link this down below, but it's really important. If you want a great follow cam setup, you have to have a really great fluid head uh, it, with tripod combo. You don't want to go with some budget friendly combo. This tripod setup was around $831. Um, you can spend a lot more on tripod setup, but for me, I really feel like this is a great value setup for uh, this type of system. And you know, after testing it, like it, it really has proved uh, and shown uh, to be a really great solution. And when you're building a follow cam setup like this for a broadcast, make sure you do get an additional pan arm for your setup because one hand is gonna be for the zoom demand, one hand can be for the focus demand. It's gonna make it uh, really easy to operate uh, as a volunteer or a, a, even a contract cam op. We're pausing this video for just a moment to tell you about our sponsor, Digital Glue. If you're in the media production game, whether it's at a small church, a large church, or anything in between, you're gonna wanna hear about Creative Space. It's a one-of-a-kind, all-inclusive storage service, which provides an affordable on-site server, which you can access globally via VPN, and the Creative Space team takes care of all of the tech. Your church doesn't need a dedicated IT staff member to support it. You guys know I've been making videos for the Church Run channel for over six years now, and my team has grown to a place where it's not just me editing videos. We needed a solution that could handle the multiple terabytes of footage we capture every single month, 
and gives us maximum flexibility for collaborative editing. That's why we started using Creative Space's Rogue Pro solution here at Churchfront. Here's the lowdown. Create a storage space and share it with your team. Set up templates with variables to rapidly create folders and project files, ready with custom naming and permissions. Transfer assets and mount directly to your desktop with built-in tools for seamless collaboration. Every folder and file has a shareable link and you can tag assets to quickly find what you're looking for with libraries. There's no need for each of our team members to copy all of the assets onto their own hard drives, which saves us a ton on storage costs. We can edit off the same server, whether we are all in one office or we are collaborating remotely. Yes, network speed does matter, but the Creative Space team is there to help find solutions like optimized proxy files or remote desktop for slow connection. The cool thing about Creative Space is we are able to collaborate from anywhere using the same files. I've dabbled with other network attached storage in the past, but many of them were unreliable, susceptible to ransomware, and a headache to set up and maintain. The Rogue Pro server, the intuitive software, the proactive support ensure that we have the performance and capability we need while keeping everything up and running smoothly. Ready to simplify your church creative team's workflow click the link in the description and schedule a demo today so this camera body is the black magic design studio 6k pro the reason why the studio line of cameras from black magic are such high value cameras for this context is they they come with all the things uh, that you would really need for this type of setup uh, one of the big things being a nice large lcd monitor on the back um, it's got the, the sunscreen or the sunshade as well. Um, so whoever's operating, it, it's, it's plenty big when you're standing right here to, to frame your shot, to make sure it's also in focus. Um, it's just really easy to operate. You've got these dot knobs here on the side that can control how much like focus peaking is on the image, as well as the brightness and contrast of the image. Uh, then we also have some other um, function buttons that are custom programmable here on the other side that we could program in a you know a one shot autofocus uh, feature or something similar to that. What's also great about this camera, it does have SDI out built into it, so we're not having to deal with a converter right here uh, on the camera platform. And then it just needs power, so power and SDI. But then there's a lot of other features to these cameras, like if you want to send a uh, cat cable from you know, your video switcher, you can have tally and talk back communication. In this particular setup, they have one camera operator, two fixed cameras, so that we don't need those advanced features yet, but it's something they can grow into as they need those features. And you get the EF mount, you've got a Super 35 sensor on this that can do up to 6K. Obviously, we're not broadcasting in 6K, so it's going to capture it in 6K on the sensor and, and downsample it to 1080p, but it makes the 1080p look phenomenal. So I highly, highly recommend uh, this camera body for a great follow cam setup. And then we've got this 70 to 200 Canon uh, Cine Servo lens. And what's great is it's fully compatible with the Blackmagic 6K Pro. Uh, you can attach the lens via the EF mount. You don't have to have any special adapters. And then the camera is going to power the lens so it can actually power the zoom and focus servo motors. And it, uh, you can actually send data to the lens through the Blackmagic Design zoom demand and the focus demand that we have here. And once again, Blackmagic Design has a really great value in these products because you're not gonna have to pay two, three, or four times more for the Canon branded uh, focus uh, demand or zoom demand. It was around $500 for both the zoom and the focus demand in this setup. I think the Canon zoom demand is like $1,200. But yeah, if you're considering the setup, they are all compatible with one another. And of course, the other the other amazing thing you're getting with the setup is the, the professional optics from this Canon lens. That's what Canon is really amazing at, is their, their lens setup. Uh, they make great cameras too. Um, but the lenses especially make a huge difference. And we'll actually put some test video footage up here for you right now of this uh, lens and this body combination so you can see for yourself how, how it looks, especially with the sharpness of the image and the color. Um, we're really, really pleased with the results of this setup. 
So the all-in setup cost for this follow cam was around $10,000. That's a serious chunk of change. Uh, but guys, I've been to other places and other churches I've seen, you know, f functionally the same thing for like $50,000. <laughs> and, and I think the, the law of diminishing returns comes into effect here. Uh, to me, to get all of the features of having a servo lens and the, the focus and the zoom demand and, and just having this, this image quality, um, you're gonna have to spend about that 10K. And then I think anything above that, um, it's, it's kind of where the, the diminishing returns start to kick in. Um, you could consider like the Blackmagic Ursa MIDI setup with a uh, maybe a, a larger broadcast lens, but then you're gonna be pushing closer to 20K for that type of setup. So for smaller to mid-sized church that really wants quality optics with the follow cam, I'd highly recommend going this route. And then it's gonna be really cost effective in pairing this camera with the pocket cinema cameras that we also have here at the church. We have two more cameras in this uh, setup here. We've got two Blackmagic pocket cinema camera 4Ks. These are very versatile, easy to use, easy to go, get going, really cost effective. They both have the Panasonic Lumix 12 to 60 millimeter zoom lenses, which just gives us a variety of focal lengths uh, to work with. They are micro four thirds uh, as well. So this one's great. It can really get like the whole congregation or it can kind of go, you know, just on, on stage uh, a bit tighter there. And then of course, being all black magic, it's easy to match up the, the color between all of the cameras. So this is camera number three, same camera body, same lens, that 12 to 60 just gives you variety of where you want to place it right now it's a nice wide shot over the shoulder kind of of the keys player getting the the backline musicians and some of the band members um, really big fan of just again the flexibility with these cameras and they could get a, another SDI cable and run it to the drums if they wanted to um, so that's our camera number three. So when we're thinking through stage plots with churches that we work with, um, let's say if you're if you're working with just two cameras, then have a great follow cam and then like a wide safe shot. And then if you have a third camera to introduce, something that's maybe gonna be on stage capturing a little bit more of the action. Their future plans in the setup here is maybe add another camera or convert one of these cameras to be a handheld wireless camera. We're back in the video booth and welcome to Video World. That's our little Husky table that they got from the local Home Depot. Uh, I think it could use maybe some cable trays underneath to help clean up some of the clutter that's going on down there. But pretty simple setup. Um, so here we have a Mac Mini. Uh, and we're not doing any encoding or switching on the computer. This is here just to uh, be able to conveniently run ATEM control software, uh, to have the Stream Deck uh, plugged into the Mac Mini to also talk to ATEM control software. Uh, we've got the Boxcaster Pro encoder here. Um, and then we've got our MultiView from the ATEM Constellation 2ME, which is right here. Uh, this is in the rack Adam showed you earlier. Um, so we've got the Novastar processor for the LED wall here, and then here's our ATEM uh, video switcher, and then we've also got a HyperDeck Mini to create some uh, quick and convenient uh, local recordings uh, here at the church. And you guys have seen before, the reason we really like the ATEM 2ME and having those 2MEs is that we can have quick video switching for both our live stream as well as for the in-person displays in the room. So this is the uh, ME number one we are using for the video wall on the stage. And I can easily switch between um, having you know, ProPresenter show up on that uh, video screen or I can you know, switch to the desktop here on the Mac Mini because you guys know what it's like if people are like, hey, I just need to like log on to you know, Google Slides or some other application that is not compatible um, with you know, getting video to the deck link. The deck link uh, that we have installed is great for ProPresenter, reliable, robust way of getting video um, output to our switcher, um, but it doesn't do simple things like just mirror the display on the Mac Mini. So we've got that flexibility there. I'll keep that on Pro Presenter mode since it's always going to be there. But if let's say they have a, a baptism and they're going to put a baptismal uh, tank somewhere on the stage and they want to put camera three on it, they can actually hit camera three here, throw camera three up onto the wall. You can see the pianos right there. And now people can kind of have an iMag effect for the baptism. So just another uh, just convenient way to use uh, that, that secondary ME for this setup. 
The other thing worth pointing out in this setup that we deployed is the X Mac Mini server. You basically have, you know, the Mac Mini uh, is inside of here and it's got little cables that connect to the ports on the back of the rack. So it just makes it nice and clean. Uh, you don't have a Mac Mini like floating around up here. Uh, we, we do have a Thunderbolt dock that is up here to make it easy to connect uh, USB drives or a mice or keyboard, uh, things like that into it. And then we were actually able to mount uh, a uh, HDMI to SDI converter from Blackmagic into this Sonnet as well. Adam came up with this clever idea of just using the, the nut that's on the SDI um, jack on the back of the converter to like basically screw it in there and lock it in place nice and clean. Uh, so here's the Stream Deck setup that I configured today. Uh, these are just labels here to show people like the top row is for uh, the preview for ME2 for our live stream. The next one is program uh, video strip here. And then down here is macros. So we've got convenient macros for like pre-service and post-service where the worship music, uh, the lyrics will show up on here. We've got one for the message. Uh, we've got one as well for slides that uses the super source function. Um, I want to show that, Adam. You guys can see that there's the slides from ProPresenter right here, and then we kind of cropped the main follow cam uh, right there. So they're able to uh, see the pastor and his slides at the same time. And then I can just have another full screen video macro um, as well. I love the Boxcaster Pro and the encoding that Boxcast has uh, using HEVC codec, which basically just makes sure the video looks, looks and sounds really good by the time it gets online and it sends it uh, to your audience. Uh, and they're gonna start using YouTube here to live stream and they're gonna use the embed code to put it on their church website as well. And Boxcast makes it really easy uh, when you wanna go onto the dashboard in Boxcast to schedule out your live stream. So all this will be automated. Nobody's gonna be pressing go live. It's gonna go live automatically five minutes prior to the service start time. And then um, they can end it manually if the church service is over, but I think we made it like a, a two, yeah, about a two hour long uh, live stream. So we had some really handy volunteers here at the church and they're helping a ton. And here's one of the really convenient solutions they implemented where they, they bought a power strip from Home Depot or hardware store, but they then just were able to re-terminate it. So they got rid of all the extra cable length because we wanted to mount it right here. And then they put a new uh, Edison plug on the end of it. And now it's conveniently plugged into the wall right there and looks super clean. So I highly recommend, the more that I'm doing install work, man, the ability to be able to re-terminate uh, plugs or SDI cables or ethernet cables and really only run however much cable you need for that particular length, it's really gonna clean up the setup. This church also did the hybrid package with Pro Church Lights, which you guys should totally check out if you're looking into a new lighting system. What's cool is they're able to buy the fixtures they need from Pro Church Lights. So they had about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I believe they're just using the Pro Washes uh, for front lights. They've got eight pixel sticks on stage. Those are the, the stick looking lights you've got there. And then they've got one, two, three, four, five, six uh, kick lights that are behind uh, acting as hair lights. And their team installed those lights all themselves. Um, and that's the whole point of the Pro Church Lights hybrid package is that you know you don't have to have lighting installers come out and do it. They can guide you through the process of uh, making sure that the, the lights are hung in the right place. Um, they'll walk you through the process of talking to electrical contractors to make sure you have the right amount of power supplied to each of the locations. Um, and I think it's a really fun way to get volunteers involved on your install process, kind of like what we do here at Churchfront, and it's just gonna save your church a ton of money. And of course, for lighting, they are using uh, LightKey. So they've got a simple kind of template of light key up and running uh, for the Pro Church lights fixtures that they installed. And they can always customize this more. They can also start implementing automation, have Pro Presenter talk to light key. They're all ready to go to start implementing those features. So if you guys would like us to come alongside you and your worship and production ministry, do check out the Churchfront Accelerator program. So not only can we help you remotely when it comes to designing the right solutions for your church, there's an option to have us come on site like we are literally doing that right now at a church in Arkansas and we can help you uh, deploy the system and get it installed and train your team members 
on the system. Adam's actually going to be at rehearsal tonight to help dial in the mix and, and train some of the team members how to run this brand new Behringer wing that they have. Um, and then finally, we can also help you actually acquire the gear. So a lot of the gear that you, you saw here today, Churchfront is actually a dealer for. So we can just make it way more convenient when it comes to specking out the system and the gear you have to buy. We can get you the right gear at the best price. Um, and it really just streamlines that process. So you're working very closely with a Churchfront coach like Adam or Luke to get all the design uh, and the purchases implemented and then we can just start rocking and rolling and get it all deployed at your church. So go to churchfront.com forward slash apply to learn more about the Accelerator program and we look forward to speaking with you soon. So it has been an absolute pleasure to work with Living Word Church. All of the volunteers that were here did a great job of doing what was needed and working together and working with me. And so shout out to all of you guys that were here during the last few days and making things happen. If you want to have this same process and be involved in some sort of integration project like this where we work together, you can go to churchfront.com and find out more details. Thanks for watching.